श्रीमद् भागवतम 429 33rd वर्स यथा हि पुरुष भारम शिरसा गुरु मुद्वहन तम स्कंधेन स आधत्ते तथा सर्वा प्रतिक्रिया do we read the word for word also mata uh that's okay you can read the translation okay translation a man may carry a burden on his head and when he feels it to be too heavy he sometimes gives relief to his uh to his head by putting the burden on his shoulder in this way he tries to relieve himself of the burden however whatever process he devises to counteract the burden does nothing more than put the same burden from one place to another should i go ahead with the purport mata yes please okay sure thanks या परपोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन वेस ऐसी भक्त वेदांत स्वामी श्री डप्रोपाद श्री डप्रोपाद की जय दिस इज अ गुड डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ एन अटेम्प्ट टू ट्रांसफर अ बर्डन फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर व्हेन वन गेट्स टायर्ड ऑफ कीपिंग अ बर्डन ऑन हिज हेड ही विल प्लेस इट ऑन हिज शोल्डर दिस डज नॉट मीन दैट ही हैज बिकम फ्रीड फ्रॉम द स्ट्रेंस ऑफ कैरिंग द बर्डन सिमिलरली ह्यूमन सोसाइटी इन द नेम ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन इज क्रिएटिंग वन काइंड ऑफ ट्रबल to avoid another kind of trouble in contemporary civilization we see that there are many automobiles manufactured to carry us swiftly from one place to another but at the same time we have created other problems we have to construct so many roads and yet these roads are insufficient to cope with automobile congestion and traffic jams there are also the problems of air pollution and fuel shortage the conclusion is that the processes we manufacture to counteract or minimize our distresses do not actually put an end to our plans it is all simply illusion we simply place the burden from the head to the shoulder the only real way we can minimize our problems is to surrender unto the supreme personality of godhead and give ourselves up to his protection the lord being all powerful can make arrangements to mitigate our painful life in material existence hare krishna thank you mata ji thank you hare krishna maharaj is not here yet lavanya mata ji can you please say Yes, Mother Tisha. माता जी आई मैसेज दैट प्रभु जी आई थिंक वी शुड वेट टू मोर मिनट्स अंटिल महाराज जॉइंस मे बी आई एम सो मिसिंग ही यस्टरडे ही कंफर्म दैट महाराज जी को कंफर्म
वैष्णवाग्रजात सगण रघुनाता सजीव साधक सवधूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य दीव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सगन ललिता श्री विशाखाता हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई हमल ऑफ एसेंसेस ऑलवेज टू शिला प्रभुपात ऑलवेज टू गुरु महाराज so thank you so much to maharaj for giving a valuable association and time so we are very fortunate to have his holiness chandra swami maharaj to enlighten us on shrimad bhagavatam so thank you maharaj so now i would like to hand over the call to you maharaj please take over so thank you can you put the verse up on the board i haven't seen the verse yet i wasn't able to get to it yeah maharaj we have read the verse yeah but i haven't seen it i don't have it at all Hindu Mata Ji, can you share? Yeah, just put the verse up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yes. Translation: Yata hi purusho baram sirasa guru udvahan tamsika dena sar adate tata sarvam pratikriya ha. Hmm. Let's see here. Let me get this. A man may carry a head, a burden on his head. Translation: And when he feels it be too heavy, he sometimes gives relief to his head by putting it on the, the burden on his shoulder. In this way, he tries to relieve himself of the burden. However, whatever process he devises to counteract the burden does nothing more than put the same burden from one place to another. In a Prabhupada's purport. This is a good description of an attempt to transfer a burden from one place to another. When one gets tired of keeping a burden on his head, he will place it on his shoulder. This does not mean that he has become free from the strains of carrying the burden. Similarly, human society in the name of civilization is creating one kind of trouble to avoid another kind of trouble. In temporary civilization, we see that there are many automobiles manufactured to carry us swiftly from one place to another. At the same time, we have created other problems. We have to construct so many roads, and yet these roads are insufficient to cope with automobile, automobile congestion and traffic jams. There are also the problems of air pollution and fuel shortage. The conclusion is that the process we manufacture to counteract or minimize our distresses do not actually put an end to our pains. It is simply illusion. We simply place the burden from the head to the shoulder. The only real way we can minimize our problems is to surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead and give ourselves up to His protection, the Lord being all powerful. Can make arrangements to mitigate our painful life in material existence. Om Gyan Timiranda Syangena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasma Shri Gurvena Maha 
Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatyade Satarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasavi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So yeah in the beautiful verse in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam it's spoken by Sri Prahlad Maharaj he's giving us some really interesting insights about trying to simply juggle the material energy to make it happy to look for happiness simply through this juggling process um, this is what everyone tries to do. Let me see, I'm looking through that verse. Uh -huh. I think I might find it. Let's see here. Well, let me see if I can find it here. Hmm. See, my somehow I skips. See, God, I'm not able to find it. But it's, the, the verse in essence says that Prahlad Maharaj is speaking to his classmates. And the basic principle is that uh, the more one tries for material happiness, the more one gets material suffering. And the basic principle that is being pointed out is that here, here's the verse. In this material world, every materialist desires to achieve happiness and diminish his distress, and therefore he acts accordingly. Actually, however, one is happy as long as he does not endeavor for happiness. As soon as one begins his activities for happiness, his condition of distress begins. So usually we go for happiness to counteract distress, and, and then what we do is we just create more distress. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, automobiles is faster transportation and able to reach one's destination in a shorter period of time with some type of luxury connected to it. But then we have all the problems that come, accidents, loss of life, air pollution, exploitation of the earth, and so many other things, we can make a long list. This is for me pretty much one of the prime examples of how an attempt to increase the quality of life only decreases the quality of life. <clears throat> So the point is not to waste time in simply trying to adjust the material energy because the material energy is daivi, daivi esha gunamayi, mamamaya maratayataya. It works under my direction, Krishna says, <clears throat> and it produces all moving and non-moving beings. So these... This material energy is daivi, it's spiritual. It's under the control of the supreme source of its existence, Sri Krishna himself. And one cannot control the material energy. 
someone sometimes we try to adjust it and we see that there's some adjustment due to to our endeavors but then again we don't really understand the outcome the outcome should be something better sometimes something apparently comes better in due course of in the initially but in due course of time because of the waves of the material energy are always moving the modes goodness passion and ignorance are never stable as is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, the mode of goodness sometimes is prominent, and sometimes the mode of passion overshadows the mode of goodness, and sometimes ignorance overshadows goodness and passion. And so the material energy is always changing. So whatever we can establish is always lost in due course of time, and then many times whatever we establish never is the satisfaction we are looking for. But that's not really the point. This is just to show you how material energy works. The real point is not wasting time and trying to improve one's material situation. Better to concentrate one's time in developing that uh, plan and fortifying that plan where one develops a permanent situation that is free from all forms of suffering and brings one to uh, what we say spiritual consciousness. In other words, one should just endeavor to become Krishna conscious. That endeavor is never ever lost. Even if it falls short at the end of one's life, one say becomes 70 or 80 percent Krishna conscious. That's never lost, even at the at the change of a body, because that will carry one the next life in that same percentage and one by the arrangement of Krishna through the material energy will again pick up where they left off in their previous life to begin again to finish their remaining percentage of Krishna consciousness. So it's always money in the bank when you engage in devotional activities and it's always a debit or a loss, a uh, deficit when we perform activities to improve our material arrangements. Therefore, it said one should live simply and with the bare necessities of life. And that way one has enough time for the real goal of life, which is to be good, to go back home, back to Godhead, or to become Krishna consciousness in this life and then eventually achieve the goal of that endeavor. So therefore, the acharyas, the spiritual teachers, they, they can see the futility that the living entity endeavors. And we see this is going on now, just like within the United States of America. And there's so many arrangements to improve situations, but the situations are only getting worse. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks they have the answer to the solutions to the problems. Everyone comes in contact with others who have different ideas and different answers. And then big things become chaotic and sometimes even disastrous. So this is an example, one problem leading to another problem, trying to solve that problem with something that doesn't work. Uh, there's no solutions to material problems. The only solution is to get out. <laughs> if the house is on fire and you're there with your little uh, cup of water throwing it on the fire, better to get out of the house and save yourself. That Even though the house may burn, there's no loss. So in the same way, uh, we may find ourselves with a little less material arrangements when we don't make big plans for these things, but at the same time, we'll have that uh, treasure that can never be taken away by time, and that is our our uh, relationship with Krishna and devotion. So this analogy given in this particular verse is really appropriate. Uh, how by shifting the burden from one side to another, all you do is you keep the burden you don't get rid of the burden. So material life is simply 
a burden. <laughs> it's a burden. Uh, happiness will come. Distress will come. Never mind. Don't worry about these things. They'll come and go. Better just to focus on the goal of life and depend on Krishna in all situations. That's all. We may, uh, okay, we may get sick, so we make some arrangements to get well again. That's natural, and that's also uh, what we say uh, human. It's also recommended to take care on the basic needs. But the problem is, is material civilization, and each and every one of us, we, we, we waste too much time in doing a lot of things that are unnecessary where we could be using that same time for chanting, for reading, for studying, for serving, and for developing stronger connections with Krishna by offering prayers to Krishna, thinking about Krishna, and associating with devotees. So, uh, you know, this verse, and Prabhupada, and this purport in the seventh canto, refers to that verse in this first canto where he says, to to pradita in the COVID. That, uh, yeah, your happiness comes, your distress comes, don't worry about it. That's just the way it is. And there is that example where uh, uh, Prabhupada tells the story of the, uh, the sadhu sitting on the banks of the river and he, all he has in his all his, in his entire, possess, entire possession is two pairs of copans that's all he has so he wears one and he washes the other one and he hangs it out for drying but while it's drying some rat comes along and starts chewing on it so he's thinking this is not good i have to you know i need these so he decides to get a, a cat. So he gets a cat, keeps away the rat, but then he has to arrange to feed the cat. So he has to get some milk for the cat. So in order to get the milk for the cat, he has to get a cow to milk the cow so he can have milk to feed the cat so he can keep the cat away from chewing on his copans. And then it becomes a burden to keep a cow. So he's thinking, what, am I have to, what do I have to do? to maintain a cow and a calf and a cat. So he thinks, well, maybe I need a wife. So I get a wife so she can milk the cow, give the milk to the cat so the cat can be fed and therefore he can take, keep the rat away from my copans. But then the wife says, well, actually I can't live like this. I need a house. So he has to quit his bhajan on the banks of the river and go get a job. So he gets a job so he can take care of his wife who can milk the cow who takes the milk to feed the cat, and then the cat he can keep the, the rat away. And then he realizes, now I don't have any time for any meditation, because now I have to work in order to maintain a wife and a house. So he thinks, better to have one less pair of copans, so he goes back to the, his original. <laughs> Prabhupada tells that story as a, to show how, you know, when we try to counteract one material thing, with another, we just complicate life more and more and more. With that. You know, people year, years ago used to sleep on a little mat on the floor, and they, they were fine, they were healthy. Now we have to, then we have a little mattress, then we get a big mattress, then we get a, you know, king size bed, then we got to get a big room so we can fit the big bed in it. <laughs> And then we have, then the bed gets uh, bed bugs, and then everybody gets bit from bed bugs, and then we have to call the doctor to get shots for bed bugs because some of us are allergic to bed bugs. And then the bed bugs are all over, and then you have to call the exterminator, and that costs thousands of dollars to get rid of the bed bugs. <laughs> I mean, it's, this is how life is. It is one. The more you add to your material life, the more you'll add one thing after another, after another, after another, and after another. So, Ishavasha midam sarvam yat kinchat jagam tad jagat 
Tena, Jep Tena, Bunji Daha, Magu Daha Kasiswit Danam. This verse from Sri Ishu Panishads, that one should live according to their quota. Quota means what keeps body and soul together. What we need for the body and what we need to practice our spiritual life nicely, successfully, these things should be arranged. If we have a nice arrangement, material arrangement now, that's fine. No need to downsize it, but just don't increase it. <laughs> if you want to downsize it, that's nice. And you never know if the economy in America crashes, which <laughs> it could be the way things are going. And then, uh, well, you know, the money we have is just like these pieces of paper. It's probably It'll be just paper, that's all. So nothing is stable in this material world. And one, one problem and one solution to that problem simply creates another problem. So this is Prahlad Maharaj's statement. And of course, and I'll read the verse again. In this material world, every materialist desires to achieve happiness and diminish, diminish distress. And therefore, he acts accordingly. Actually, however, one is happy as long as he does not endeavor for happiness. As soon as he begins his activities for happiness, his condition of distress begins. This point is also understood in, in another way is that the happiness we're looking for is not external. We see that people who have much wealth in this world uh, are not happy. In fact, the statistics show that people who have the most are the most uh, mentally disturbed and uh, their children are, have the highest suicide rate within the population. And that's a fact. Children who have come from affluent families, especially those in their teenage years, are, are ranked as the highest among the suicide rates. Why? Because they've been, they've been given the idea that, you know, you have all these things, that's nice, now you can be happy. But as it says, happiness is an affair of the heart. When the heart is happy, or when one is in contact with one's heart through loving relationships with Krishna and his devotees, then whatever we have becomes a source of happiness. But when one looks outside for that source of happiness and neglects relationships, then uh, that happiness is not available. What's inside reflects outside. So one has to find that happiness within. Uh, There's a nice little in the story. It's a nice little, what we say, uh, what's the word? Uh, can't think of the word. Uh, mm. It says a story with a message. Uh, and this, it goes that one man, he hears that somewhere in the world, there's a large amount of wealth. And uh, so he decides to make his life the journey of finding that wealth. And so following maps, getting clues, doing different things, he searches every for this wealth, and then his whole life is expended. And then at one point he dies. So his body is found, claimed by his relatives. They take him back to his home, put him in. And they're about to dig a grave in the backyard. And uh, when they dig the grave in the backyard was the treasure he was looking for. It was right in his own backyard. A little parable. So what is that saying? That actually whatever we're looking for in life as far as happiness is found within you. When you find it within, you find it without. Sometimes things without can help us find it within, but those things are, are, are the activities of devotional service or the arrangements we make in order to increase the quality of our devotional service. 
These arrangements we can make, such as if we're chanting in a situation where there is a lot of distractions, we can chant into an area where there's an altar where other people are chanting, where it's more spiritually uh, conducive. So these arrangements can be made. Um, we can also see how we can increase the quality of our service to the devotees. So in, in Krishna consciousness, the devotee is always making arrangements to qualitize our activities and sometimes even increase the quantity because one who is inspired in devotional service always thinks of more and more ways to serve or gets inspirations. This is more the understanding. The more one is engaged in devotional service, one the more one gets inspired by other ideas how to serve better. It's through the inspiration. Once the inspiration is there, the desire comes. And when the desire comes, Krishna, through his mercy, inspires the devotee to make the arrangements to fulfill those spiritual desires. But as far as material life is concerned, you can't improve it. And uh, it's a waste of time simply to, to make all these grand arrangements. Best to just have whatever is needed to keep body and soul together. And that way, uh, we can be free from a lot of the problems that come for those who have a lot and can't maintain it. They're always trying to, they think that maintaining whatever they have means increasing whatever they have. And therefore, it's only more and more problems. So this verse is very instructive, both the one in the seventh canto and the one in the fourth canto. That material life is not about shifting the burdens or trying to find happiness through material arrangements. It's simply about using our time, intelligence, energy, facilities, and whatever else we have in uh, increasing the quality of our attention and devotion on Sri Krishna. Because the more we bring Krishna into our life, the more the life becomes auspicious. Wherever Krishna is there, to whatever degree he is there, that place becomes a holy place. So just like we have deities in our homes, for those of us who have deities, we worship our deity. The home is not a house, it's a mandir. It's a place where the Lord resides. So wherever the Lord resides is a mandir, it's a temple. And therefore, it is not simply something in the material world, but a place to practice Krishna consciousness and a place to uh, offer our devotion to the Lord and his deity form. So these are some things we could look towards to try to increase the quality of our spiritual life, um, which is always unlimited. As Prabhupada said, in the spiritual life, is there's no limit to how much you can become Krishna conscious. Material life, there's no limit on how much you can suffer. Both have their unlimitedness in opposite directions. <laughs> okay. Perhaps we'll leave time for some questions. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Maharaj, for the nectar, and it was so beautiful as usual, so wonderful instructions. So, so thank you, Maharaj. So I will request devotees now if they have any questions or they want to share any realization, so they can take now. So thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a beautiful uh, class. Uh, I... yeah. Can you increase your volume slightly? Is this better now? 
No, a little bit, much louder, actually. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, can you hear me now? Is this better? It's 50% better, but <laughs> okay. it'll so work, sorry. I think. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I was just changing to earphones. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful class, Maharaj. It, it was very beautiful, especially all of the examples and that we have to actually search within us. The treasure is no, not outside. And uh, the example, the story of the, the particular sage who was first trying to uh, meditate and then from there how he builds his family and then it, that is exactly my position because we are uh, in this material world and one thing after the other after the other you know it thinks just material needs are just increasing uh, so uh, that was my question Maharaj how how do we balance it out so that uh, as because of, we are grihasthas and we have children and as the children grow their needs are increasing and uh, so uh, how do we I could I could give you two answers on that one is quite radical and the other one is very appropriate to the situation would you like to hear the radical reason <laughs> Definitely, all right. Okay, and this is this is the future of our movement. That's why it seems to be a little radical, although it's not radical. In essence, it's just a, a great uh, leap away from what we are now in the way we live to what um, Srila Prabhupada said would be the ideal lifestyle. And actually, he said the necessary lifestyle as this age of Kali continues together with other families um, Prabhupada says the best way to live in this age is to actually live in rural communities we live in these urban communities and we're somewhat disassociated from each other in a more rural type of atmosphere um, sharing of uh, resources sharing of labor sharing of knowledge, all these things become what we say available. Therefore, raising children, educating children, um, taking care of one's personal needs, when it's done in a community fashion, uh, with Krishna in the center, obviously, which is actually the Vedic culture. The Vedic culture was more or less a simplified agrarian culture where every village would have a couple temples, maybe one main temple, and everybody knew each other in the village. Well, you might say, well, that's impractical to go back to that kind of simplified lifestyle. But we can still do that with the, what is called these farm communities, where getting land, building houses, growing crops, uh, uh, taking care of children, taking care of elders. In other words, going back to a more simplified lifestyle, which is more communal. And that's it's much easier to practice Krishna consciousness in that because of the support. That's Prabhupada's vision for our society. And he said it will be a necessity as Kali Yuga increases where the cities will become more and more un uninhabitable for decent people, they'll become places of violence and economic distress or economic adventures only. Um, so that is the what I guess I could say the radical answer to your question, <laughs> which is the long term, which is the long term solution, and that's the more permanent solution. Um, and it's being done in some areas of the world where devotee families are seeing the need to bind together with each other and uh, work in a more, what we say, uh, rural atmosphere. It's also healthier life. It's a life where you don't have to work all year round in order to maintain yourself because there are so many 
people to do the work and resources are not needed so much. All you need is, as Prabhupada said, he said, grow your own food. He said, uh, make your own cloth, make your own cloth, clothing. He said, uh, learn the science of medicine by studying herbs. In other words, the earth is full of so many medicinal herbs, which it can be made into medicines, just like in New Taliban, in Mississippi, we have a devotee there, his name is Dwibucha, he has a business. And uh, when I was there, he was showing me around the forest area, pointing to the different plants, and he could describe each of the plant and what each plant had a medicinal, um, what we say, cure to it, a cure to it. And you just have to know how to extract the plants, you know, energy and put it into a form of a medicine. So everything's there in nature. In fact, even today's medicine are coming from nature. They just add a lot of other things to it. That's all. So God has provided everything people need to live nicely, happily, healthily in a more simplified atmosphere. But we are, we are distance ourselves from that. We live in these, uh, you know, big houses with so many uh, uh, responsibilities just to take care of the house. <laughs> One family struggling to maintain the children Take care of the house. So actually, uh, the way we live in the society now is dysfunctional. And that's why so many people are in distress and in anxiety. And that's why there's so much crime and so much dissatisfaction. Uh, it's based on lifestyle. So, and Prabhupada's vision is very complete. And then the last thing he said is, uh, you know, uh, build your own homes. Uh, last year, uh, and uh, what was the month? I, I'm trying to think what month that was. It was October, yes. In fact, it was practically the exact day we're talking now, last October. Yeah, it was October 2nd last year. I was sitting with a bunch of devotees in the Amish community in Pennsylvania. We had been invited by them. We had actually asked them if we could spend time with them. So we spent about eight hours sitting with them and talking. And they were telling about their whole lifestyle. If you know anything about the Amish, um, you know, they don't use any electricity. They don't have any cars. Um, they don't, uh, you know, they don't, uh, they do everything insular. They school their own children. Uh, everything is done within the community like that. And they were giving us a lot of information on how they live. We were asking questions. We came with about a dozen devotees. And so there's an example right in the United States. There's a couple communities like that that have been traditional. They go back hundreds of years. Uh, they come, they're coming from the German stock. And then, of course, they all come together on Sunday and they also do their prayers and they do their prayers daily also within their families like that. So we were studying them because we wanted to understand more how to bring Prabhupada's uh, vision for the future in terms of rural communities, cow protection, agriculture, simple living. So we were gathering information, but we found from that community alone, a lot of, uh, what we say, good ideas that could be implemented anywhere by any serious group of people. So that's the, uh, that's the long term solution, which is the permanent solution. Now for looking for a solution in a more immediate sense, then, uh, we have to really see by taking inventory what we need and what we don't need, downsizing, getting rid of things that we don't want or can't use, giving them away, uh, spending more time with the family and spending more time with devotees like that. 
Uh, this is one of the benefits of this recent virus is that it's brought families together a lot more to, to the chagrin of some, <laughs> but to the happiness of others, families have become more and more together. <laughs> Where before, some are working and busy, school, every play, everyone is doing something like that. And it was, it was more like a fractionalized community, fractionalized family. So, uh, on a very immediate level, trying to bring more time the, for the family, for more Krishna consciousness, uh, that will give you more of an insight on how to live free from a lot of the excess that we somehow or other, it's not that because we wanted all these things, it's because they've been imposed upon us as a social necessity. If you want to live in the society and stay up to the society's norms, and then there's a standard that they throw at you. And the standard is never stable, it's always increasing. So as the standard increases, you're also being forced to somehow or other keep up with the standard. It's not enough to have one car for the whole family. Every person in the family has to have a car. That means more work to maintain the cars, insurance, gas, repairs, parking problems, places. It's just unlimited. So community is the solution, but in the meantime, we can see how we can downsize our present situation. And if we seriously, with a a careful relation, we can see some of the things we don't need and some of the activities we can, what we say, minimize and spend time more time in devotional life. Because as we spend more time in devotional life, then our consciousness becomes more purified. And then even from the material point of view, through a more purified consciousness, we have the, uh, what we say, the tools and the vision how to deal with our material responsibilities. And through that, we can also learn how to simplify our life. Uh, I, I'll just mention this. One of the greatest happinesses that I get is when I can give something away. <laughs> you know, as a sannyasi, people are always giving me things, you know, gifts and other resources finances and so on. So I'm thinking, well, wow, that's nice. I got more than I need. I have to figure out how to use it. And so when I find I, uh, some source where I can, that people can use what I have or give it away or when I can just get rid of it, uh, it brings me a sense of satisfaction like that. Of course, receiving things are also nice, but then again, we have to live in such a way as that we uh, don't overburden our life with things that we just think we need, but we don't need. <laughs> like I had a phone when I was in the United States. It was a real simple uh, Nokia phone. Uh, you flip it open, you flip it closed. And you flip it, it, do, it did two things. It made calls and it uh, kept people's numbers in it. That's about all. I had that phone for about 30 years. Just recently, within the last few years, somebody gave me one of these Android phones and said, this is what you need, Maharaj. Just, without this, you're, you're, not up, you're not with it, you know? So I said, all right, maybe I could find some use for it. But I would never go out and buy one. <laughs> so, but we have to be careful because as a family, the children are influenced by the environment and by their friends. And they're always telling us, well, they need this, they need that, they need this. 
uh, the children are sometimes pushing us to get more for whatever reason. So be wary of that. Thank you so much for such a detailed answer. Uh, definitely uh, the radical way to go is, uh, it. I, I never thought about it that way. I've seen people ha in communities, but uh, uh, I, I, I never thought about it on a personal level. But now that you have given that instruction, uh, we are praying that someday it becomes possible. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. You don't even have to start your own community. You have to see what communities are going. And if you're enthusiastic enough and ready to make a, a radical change, you can probably join a community that's already in, in progress. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much. Please bless us, all of us. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the most relevant question. I would instruct devotees to read uh, Canto 1, chapter 10, verses 3, 4, and 5, to get a greater insight on Srila Prabhupada's uh, evaluation of the present situation in society and the future of our Krishna consciousness movement. That's Bhagavatam one ten Let me see, is, is that 1103 you posted? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Let me see, this doesn't look like a verse. Go to 110, I'm sorry, 1104, that's the verse. Yeah, 110 first. That's the verse. 104, 105. And read these verses. Purports, Prabhupada's purports, and you will you'll see, get an insight of what is actually civilized life. Mm -hmm. And the following verse, two, verse number four, and I think also a uh, verse number five, and maybe verse number six also. You see, when people are worshiping God, then nature provides everything. Although people have so many material things, they're always still in want. Even, even for the basic necessities of life, sometimes people can't even get that. Although so much, because people are sinful, and therefore when, sinf when sinful activities uh, in increase, material nature withholds her bounties and she doesn't provide as she did before. And then this verse here, because the king is righteous, then everyone, you know, we can see that there's no distress that come from the material energy when there is a saintly king like that. So well, that's the conclusion of these three verses. Verses four, five, and six, especially four, verse number four is the main verse.
Well, but I said, has civilization produced anything but quarreling and individual strife? Has the civilization enhanced the cause of equality and fraternity by sending thousands of men into the hellas factories and war fields at the whim of a particular man? Mm -hmm. So even now, we can't even get quality food. Everything is, uh, what we say, uh, uh, polluted either by the environment or they take the food and mix it with something else and you don't get the pure food anymore. It's all based on economics. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for shining the light of enlightenment for all of us struggling in this material energy, in this material situation to help us stay focused on the goal. And that is Krishna consciousness. That's a very important message. Thank you for giving us this great uh, enlightenment. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj for giving a valuable association. So if no one has any questions or comments, so we can end here. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Bo. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Vancham Kaltarubeshi Kapas in the Anand Anand Koti Vaishwan ki jai Shri La Prabhupad ki jai Shumat Bhagavatam ki jai Hikoli Nesh Chandra Swami Maharaj ki jai Thank you Maharaj